So daylight saving time, it ends this weekend, and it's more important than ever just to practice strong sleeping habits. Joining us right now is the co-author of Sleep for Success, Harvard sleep expert who also consults with the Benjamin Hotel, Dr. Rebecca Robbins. Nice to have you back on Good Thank Day, you for New York. Me. Good so this one hour, right, we're falling back with the, the clock, it really throws a lot of people off. What can oh, we do? So the fall is much easier than the spring, of course, so that's mm. the good news. And this is a great time, uh, as you mentioned, to really make sleep a priority and start your winter off on a good foot. So we have an extra hour. Now here's what we do. The biggest mistake is thinking, oh, I can stay up an extra yeah. hour, but instead try to get to bed as close to your usual time as possible. And if you're using your smartphone as your alarm clock, that'll change automatically. Set your alarm clock for the, your usual time, right. but what will now be one, giving you one extra hour of sleep. So don't take advantage of that hour. <laughs> <laughs> staying up, Bianca, and partying all night. Especially for my parents out there, because our children will yeah. not be willing to sleep in and give you the, that extra hour. So they're going to be up at your previous usual wake-up time. Sleep is so important, um, and we know because on this schedule, we're always mm -hmm. in a jet-lag state. Yes. Mm -hmm. So there's that book, Breathe, which our mm -hmm. boss is obsessed with. Mm -hmm. And it talks about nose breathing rather than mouth breathing. Mm -hmm. Is it something you can train yourself and does it really work? So this is a kind of similar to, to sleep in, in some ways, but um, where sleep come, or, uh, breath, breath work comes up for, for us is kind of coaching folks to uh, learn how to practice relaxation strategies, which are yeah. really beneficial for all of us. And so nostril breathing alone does confer benefits, as uh, outlined in that book. But then the, breathing through your nose, it's a smaller opening than your mouth, and so you can kind of control your breath, and it can be very relaxing. So it's a good thing to do before bed. And those strategies, if you practice them diligently, you can start to be more of a, a nose breather than a mouth breather. Now, Rosanna said that um, her husband um, can, you know, make some very interesting <laughs> noises at night in terms of snoring. Uh, like, mm -hmm. do, do you slap some tape on the mouth to do the nose breathing? Or, I well, shove how do you do? him. <laughs> An elbow in the room? <laughs> So snoring is very common. Snoring alone is not necessarily a problem, but if snoring at night, really loud snoring, is also coupled with excessive daytime sleepiness, that could be a sign that you're at risk for sleep apnea. So it might be something to speak to a healthcare provider about nostril breathing could, though, potentially help with some of the snoring. So, uh, so maybe something for the husband to try. Now, Dr. Robbins, <laughs> I know we, we talk about having to deal with this twice a year. We know it disrupts people's sleep patterns, mm -hmm. which can, you know, negatively affect their cognitive function. Like, oh, yeah. this is not good for people. Mm -hmm. Why are we still doing it? It's a good question. I think there's a lot of momentum that's building now for maybe doing away with yeah. the time change. Mm -hmm. And again, the fall is easier, but the spring really wreaks havoc when yeah. we lose an hour mm -hmm. because we rob, we take that away from our sleep most often. And so in that week after the spring forward, we see a statistically significant increase in car accidents yes. and in heart attacks. Yeah. And so there's a real public health argument for doing away with it. I know Arizona did away with it. Hawaii did away with it. Right. Who do we got to call? to do away with this. Mm. Maybe they're watching. Yeah, you never know. No, they're in Puerto Rico right now. Yeah. Everybody's in Puerto Rico right now. All right, I know we did some uh, tips for mm -hmm. sleeping with you. I know we talked about this. Go to bed at your usual time mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. the time changes. Mm -hmm. Resist the urge to sleep. And the second one you have, practice a relaxing winding down ritual before bed, such as? It's, unfortunately, we can't turn our brains off automatically. It's yes. a process. And yeah. so really thinking about picking in some time before our target bedtime to relax and unwind, unplug from electronics, talk to loved ones, focus on happy memories, and help us ease into our sleep. Now, another really good one, especially uh, more important than ever, is getting out into the natural light this coming ah. Sunday. Exposure to natural light can help us sync our circadian rhythm to the new pattern of light and darkness. How long do you have to be out in the light? Because it's marathon day. Yeah. Yes, it I'm is. cheering on my cheer. nephew. Fantastic. Yes. So as soon as you wake up at that, again, your kind Normal of target time. wake up time, yeah. go out, walk around the block, go get a coffee. Wow. That early morning sunlight exposure can help us, again, transition to this new time change. And wow. it, we, I know we've heard so many times, how bad is it to have the phones in the bedroom by your, on your bed, on your nightstand? Uh, now, we, we can't hear it enough. Cell phones alone aren't 
necessarily bad as long as you're turning the brightness down. So you want to make sure that you're not at full blast with the brightness and you have the, a warmer color coming from your screen. And you can do that by the night shift uh, functionality on iPhone. There's a program called Flux on Android. And so that can help your screen not be as disruptive. But what we're doing on them often is it's not exactly relaxing. You're checking emails, Great. you're doing social media. So maybe add those, you know, the 30 minutes before bed. Try to have that be your tech-free space. I Interesting. So what do you do? Do you hang out at the Benjamin Hotel? I know you're a consultant there. Anybody who has like problems with sleeping, they come see you? Uh, well, it's been really fun and they're a sleep expert. We've designed the guest rooms according to the science of our sleep. Wow. And so the bedroom is one of the most important places it in sure our house is. to set up our, our, ourselves for success when it comes to sleep. So it's been fun to kind of infuse some of the scientific dictates into those, uh, the rooms and the design. And a couple things for all of us at home are we want to design and really soothing and relaxing colors so you walk in and you feel relaxed you want to make sure that your mattress and your pillows are really supportive of your good night's sleep and all of these things go a really long way towards again setting you up for success I guess we got to go to the Benjamin Hotel I and get a good so. night's sleep you know really when you we do have a good night's sleep we're both like oh Mm -hmm. It's it just, it just like such difference. a good mood, you it know. It makes such a difference. Yeah, I know. Mood, health, well-being. You know, not only tomorrow, but then we're, our research is showing into the, oh, we well know. into the future. I know. Dr. Rebecca Robbins, thank you so much. We always thank appreciate talking to you. Thank you for having me. To you. Sleep Great well. To be here. Sleep well. <laughs> yes, sweet dreams. <laughs> yes.